Here's one of the latest interviews from Rock and Metal Revival. If you want to hear the whole show, go to rmrshow.com. From the Sound Mountain Sessions, there's brand new music from Lynch Mob on Rock and Metal Revival. And Jerry, it is always a pleasure when we get to have uh, one of the uh, real true life guitar heroes on the show with us. And uh, we'd like to welcome to the show Mr. George Lynch. Welcome to the show, George. Hey, guys. Thank you. So, George, um, with this new new album, well, it's an EP. Are you guys going to actually uh, do a full album eventually? Yeah, we've actually been working on a full-length record for over a year, and uh, sporadically, and uh, we got about half of it in the can, and we're going to be working hard on that uh, throughout the rest of the year. And in, in our you know, holes that we have in our schedule, uh, we're actually going in. Uh, we've got the dates uh, up until uh, the end of this weekend, and then we fly home and uh, uh, go right into the studio the next day, and we're going to make a real good stab at trying to. Um, finish up the writing on that song we've got quite a few songs written and about half of them recorded including a uh, cover of bad company's burning sky uh, we're familiar with that song but it's, a, it's been oh, a favorite yeah. of mine for years and we just did a, a version of it that's, that's, that's uh, very uh it's not it's not really different it's just different enough to make it worthwhile covering it yeah. Sweet. Fantastic. Well, you know, George, one of the things, I've been a Lynch Mob fan since the first album came out, and uh, I get a little bit of that uh, older, grindy, bluesier feel with this CD. Is that is that the that sound you're going after with Oni's vocals? Uh, well, with everything. I mean, we. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that it was premeditated, uh, but I would say that the way we recorded this record was the way we recorded the first record when we wrote it, which is basically just set up in a room and capture the moment and not think too hard about it, which is yeah. not to say that we didn't think about it. <laughs> I mean, writing songs is, is, can be work, and, and you have to put some thought into it, obviously, but uh, we didn't overthink it uh, because we didn't have the luxury of the time to overthink it. So, um, you know, i got to say that the... the Wicked Sensation record uh, was demoed in that same way. We, we, we were just building the band, and we were working in a kind of a small home studio, and we just, you know, we wrote those first initial songs, Wicked and River, River of Love, and, and a couple others, and uh, those, that was our demo. And I got to say that that demo sounds better than the record, and that was recorded very quickly, kind of off the cuff, or not in, I, in a necessarily an ideal situation, you know. And then yeah. we went ahead and, you know, obviously spent a year, year and a half, you know, building the whole real record, you know, with, with, with world-class producers and world-class studios and spending lots of money and, yeah. and a lot of time. And that's, I mean, the record's great, but that demo had a fire that the record did not have. And I think what we captured on Sam Mountain Sessions was we kind of did our version of that early demo without beating it to death. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and we really just captured a moment. It took us about five days. We had no songs. We wrote everything right there on the floor in this big vacant house up in the mountains that we built a studio in. And we built everything from the ground up, you know, spur of the moment. And it was all just inspiration. And, uh, you know, just did it by the seat of our pants. And uh, I'm very proud of it. You know? And as you said, it captured that first initial kind of, energy that you have when you get in a room with guys that have chemistry and and you capture that without having to recreate it mm -hmm. yeah. so what people get to hear is that creative moment versus a recreative moment which yeah. is entirely different <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Well, George, with everybody, you know, uh, a lot of people going back to those, uh, taking those 80s releases or early 90s releases and remastering them, have you ever thought about remastering some of them earlier sessions? No, because I think they are what they are. I, I don't see any reason in, 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 in fixing something that isn't broken. Exactly. You know, I, I, I might consider, uh, uh, you know, we might consider doing, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an extreme variation on Mm -hmm. a song, an earlier song, like, uh, let's say, uh, River of Love, do it sort of acoustically with, with slide guitar and dobro and percussion and other kinds of instrumentation, maybe an old B3 Hammond organ or something. You know, oh, very like cool. Songs, you know, like, give it a whole different flavor, and that would justify doing it. And I think it would, a song like that would lend itself to that kind of treatment. Oh, yeah. Uh, but to just, you know, pump it out again, I mean, it's already there. It's, yeah. And a year and a half on it, and half a million dollars. Why do it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try something new. Well, 
We know that you're busy with the lynch mob, but you're also busy with your other project, uh, Tooth and Nail, or TNN, as we have uh, been known to call it. Uh, how's that coming out? It's been done. The record has been finished for some months now, uh, mixed, mastered, in the can. Uh, we pushed the date back a little bit to accommodate the label, so it, instead of a September release, now we have a late October release. We've got a Halloween release around the world, and I feel that, that record will not, will not disappoint people. I mean, it's not lynch mob. You know, it's not really as, as organic or bluesy as a lynch mob record, because that's not what Jeff and I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we're the chemistry behind Doc, and we did most, Jeff and I did most of the writing in Doc, and, and uh, uh, at least the basic writing, you know, the instrumentation, the music. And then, um, you know, we did a record called LP, which is a little slightly more progressive, I would say, than, than Doc. And, um, but, um, and that's how, that's our chemistry, you know, but it, it's, Surprisingly good. I, people are here just, uh, you know, I played it for Nick Brown, who's uh, recently, and uh, he was just, you know, blew his, blew his mind, you know. It's like, oh, my God, how are we going to do this live? <laughs> in practice. <laughs> Sweet. So, um, George, I'm actually I actually build guitars too, and I've been watching, uh, checking out your website with the uh, Mister Scary guitars. Now, you do all that carving and stuff yourself or oh absolutely absolutely um that's why i videotape myself doing it and uh you know there's no tricks up my sleeve i mean i i was actually uh a couple years ago i was in a unfortunate situation where i was a wheelchair bound for a little while Dude. and uh i was having to uh keep myself busy and very frustrated and um being kind of locked in the house you know and not able to do a whole lot so i started doing uh artwork and uh just for myself you know and that led to me doing what like sort of translating that artistic impulse to the guitars and i started very modestly just doing slight little changes cosmetically to the guitars and evolved into what i got now yeah and uh you know to be quite honest i do not build the necks uh, i don't have the, the expertise or the equipment to do that yeah yet, but yeah. Uh, i'm learning but i do shape them uh, i don't install the frets uh, and I don't do the inlays. Yeah. But everything else on that guitar, I do myself, including winding the pickups, uh, all the routing, it's all hand routed with a hand router and Dremel tools, and I do all the fire, the burning, the paint, the bones, the wind the pickups, all the distressing on the metal and the setup and the assembly. It's all me. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've just taught myself to do all this stuff. I'm, I'm not a luthier. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I've been around guitars all my life, so I know when I used to, you know, I'm. I used to teach guitars back in the seventies. I would, you know, I'd buy bodies and necks uh, from Charvel and Mighty Might and uh, yeah. Robert Jackson and all these people, and I I pulled my guitars together for students, and I would sell them to them, and that's how I supplemented my income. And I learned a lot by doing that, and I just took that to the next level, and it's been a so been really you... a wonderful experience. Um, and I don't build that many. I mean, I do maybe a half a dozen a year, yeah, uh, maybe a few more, and it's hard to find the time but you know my customers are very patient with me understand that i'm on the road and i'm in the studio and i'm working a lot so i work on them when i can and i've got uh, i've got about a half a dozen on the bench right now that I'm Sweet. In various stages of completion i need to get done but yeah awesome so what do you look for in a guitar when you pick up a new guitar what what do you look for as far as like the neck the feel of it or the sound of well it? everything everything you know and and the thing is, I'm very particular about what I like, but I have to take into consideration what the person I'm building it for wants. Now, mm-hmm. some people come to me and say, you know, I want you to build what you love. About half of my customers are like that. Mm-hmm. And they're always emphatically happy. I haven't had one person that just isn't head over heels in love with the guitar when they get it. Because um, <clears throat> I really am very careful with tone woods and, uh, you know, with the construction and with the playability. I mean, the necks are, you know, boogie body, C-necks, you know, yeah. Circa 79 through 82. I mean, they're, you know, just they play like butter. I mean, the point of the guitar, I think, beyond what it looks like, which is to me beautiful, but they're not wall hangers. They're not necessarily, it's functional art and yeah. functional, uh, emphasis on functional. And my point, you know, the ideology behind the guitar is to have something that's transparent. It doesn't get in the way of your creative impulse. Mm-hmm. So when you, feel something or hear something in your head, the guitar doesn't fight you. You know, it's actually, if anything, 
is bringing stuff out of you rather than being an impediment to creativity. And yeah, that's makes what a I lot of sense. Words. Choice of woods, um, you know, even the, the carving to some extent has sort of a, the idea behind it was kind of external chambering, where as you learn in music when you're recording and playing in venues that, you know, randomness is your friend. <laughs> yeah. Chaos theory works for music, you know, and, and um, you know, music does not sound good in equilaterally, equilaterally you know, uh, you know, designed square room. Uh, so I feel the same is, is true for guitars and any instrument. Um, you know, trying to make it as sensuous and random and beautiful as possible. And at the same time, you know, tone is the number one, you know, point of building this thing. You want it to sound good. You want to have the full spectrum. Um, you know, that's why I generally go with lighter woods, open grain, and uh, I'm very careful with the pickup lines. And with all my guitars, and you know, pickups are, are very subjective. So I tell people, listen, if this, if this is not for you, mm-hmm. please come back to me. And it's not hard for me to build another pickup. You know, yeah. <laughs> tell me what you like, what you don't like. You can always swap that out. And I'd say pickup is maybe 20% of it. Mm. So it, it could be a very uh, important component of, of the. Uh, you end up with the balance of the guitar, and sometimes the pickups are just sort of a random uh, shot in the dark. Yeah, you, know, you try to be scientific about it, but then, then you, at the end of the day, sometimes it's just luck, you know, dumb luck. So, very cool. Uh, yeah. So, so George, if people want to check out your guitars, do you, what what's the website they can check those out at? MrScaryGuitars.com. Okay, and uh, I know that you're on a, on a budget of time today, and so we want to play another tune off uh, Sound Mountain Sessions. We're going to play Sucka. Can you tell us a little bit about this tune? Yeah, that was the last song we wrote. We had written the first three. We were very happy. We had another day, and we were all sitting around and going, well, what what do we need? I go, you know what? And, and Oni actually said this. You know, we, need, we, need, we need a burner. We need a barn burner. We need something that's just like early Van Halen, you know, ACDC, high-energy riffy lynch just go off you know that kind of stuff mm-hmm. no excuses doesn't have to be uh, you know not have to be rocket science and uh, that inspired us uh, to just you know you, once he said that I just went click and I went in the room and I grabbed the guitar and I went how about you know, I just felt that <laughs> nice that riff and, and, and it was, it was beautiful well let's turn it up real loud this is new lynch mob this is Sucka from the Sound Mountain Sessions George Lynch thank you very much for joining us on RMR thank you guys I appreciate it to catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radio is on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Rock 101 KLOL on Saturdays 11 p.m. Eastern on Z-Rock 106.9 KKZR Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Uncontrolled Noise Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on uncontrollednoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations. Enjoy this edition of Rock and Metal Revival. <laughs> 